We have three services, and, and uh, we were looking forward to have a service where we could have everyone together, and here we are. Praise God for the weather, right? It was raining yesterday. We were in need of rain, but uh, we needed sunshine for today, and here we are. That's just, this is amazing. What a journey, right? What a, what a fantastic God that we serve, and, and what we want to do today is we want to celebrate God, what He has done in GMC, and, and at the same time, we want to take a hold of, of what God has in store for us as a church. The beauty of the church is that God has all called us, and all of us are important for Him. He knows us by name. He knows where we're from. He knows our journey, and He wants to rally us together to do the work of the kingdom, right? And that's amazing to see God bringing us together. I, I believe that's the work of God. I really, I really believe that God brought us together for a mission, for a call. And what we want to do today is we want to celebrate the fact that God is faithful and that, is good, that God is good. And that as He was faithful in the past, He will be faithful today and He will continue to be faithful. As we place ourselves before Him, as we seek His will, and as we say, God, here I am, He's going to use us. The beauty with Christianity is God is not a respecter of people, of persons. He, he calls us and He wants to reveal Himself to us. And the only thing that is necessary is for us to be available. If we as a church, if me as a person, choose to be available, God's going to show up in my life and He's going to do beyond what I've ever imagined or thought. And that is so amazing. So God doesn't have any favorites. Well, He has favorites. It's me and you. Can you tell your neighbor that you're God's favorite? Ha <laughs> ha! Pretty cool, hey? We're all God's favorite. And God has a plan for us, and God wants to work in our lives. Just to let you know that we will be having offering at the end of the service. We'll have the announcements at the end of the service. So what I'd like to do at this point here, I'd like to share, share a portion of, uh, of God's Word. I'd like to share uh, my heart to you guys. And, and before we do that, I would ask you to stand like we do in church. Can you do that? And we will present ourselves before the Lord so that we could take a hold of His Word, so that we can see His Word penetrate our hearts. So like I often do, I invite you to ex extend your hand in front of you as an openness to what God wants to tell you this morning. Father God, we thank You so much for Your presence. We thank You so much for the church. We thank You so much for what You've done in the church, what You've done in our lives. And we thank You also for what You have in store. So, Father, what we want to do this morning, we want to open up to what you want to say and what you want to communicate to us. Father, I believe that you have a word for each person here, that you want to quicken every heart, that you want to stir up your will in every heart. Father, I thank you that there's no heart too hard. There's no situation too difficult. There's no obstacles too high that you cannot help us through. Father, you are the God of the breakthroughs. And what we want to see is to see you lead us on. We want to see you continue to do our work, uh, your work in our lives. So we present ourselves before your word, and we say yes to what you want to say. So be glorified in our lives. And all the people of God said, amen. You may grab a chair. Awesome. If you have your phone, we don't have a screen. If you have your Bible, if you brought your Bible, that's fantastic. If you have your phone, I invite you to go to Joshua chapter 4, verse 19. And the book of Joshua is an awesome, awesome book, right? Because it talks about conquering. It talks about moving forward. It talks about stepping in what God has in store. Uh, we have to believe that God has things in store for us, that God has things in store for the church. And as we're here today, we know that it's not done, right? We know that God is not over, that God has a plan, and, and that God wants to work through our lives, and He wants to move in a powerful way in our lives. So we've got, what we're going to do is we're going to take a portion of Joshua chapter 4, verse 19. The context is that they crossed the Jordan, and now they're facing the promised land. And they're excited because they were waiting for that. At the same time, they were a little afraid. Because there were some challenges in front, of, uh, in front of them. They remembered the giants in the land that caused them to go back in the wilderness and turn and, and walk in the wilderness for basically 40 years. 
So what I'd like to do to you, what I'd like to do right now is to read chapter 4, verse 19. So I, I guess you were all able to find that on your phone. I'm going to read it from the NIV. It says, On the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camp at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gil Gilgal the twelve stones they had taken out of the Jordan River. Verse 21, And he said to the Israelites, in the future, when your descendant asked her father, what do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. Can you, can you repeat after me? Dry ground. Awesome. In verse 23 it says, For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan just what he had done to the, to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. What you see in the stacks, you see God leading. You see that God is a leading God. God is on the move. God has things in store. God is not a God of status quo, right? He doesn't stop. He's still on the mission. He still has a, pl a plan. And he had a plan for the Israelites. And I believe that he has a plan for us, GM, GM Sears. I believe that God is at work and God wants to work in our lives. Every generation is called to experience their own move of God. Every generation is called to experience their move of God. If you look at the story of the Red Sea, uh, you see that Moses elaborates or, 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 or mentions the story of the Red Sea where the Israelites were led out of Egypt, right? What an awesome story of God's faithfulness, right? You read about the ten plagues of Egypt, you, look, you, you think about the glory of God. You think about God leading the Israelites out of Egypt through the Red Sea. It must have been an awesome picture, right? To be part of the millions that were there crossing the Red Sea and, and being able to move on and to be freed from Egypt. And, and it, I think it's a picture of salvation where God came into our lives and freed us from the, from, from the world or from the spirit of the world or from the bondage of the enemy or from the, the, the control of Pharaoh. And you see in, the, in, in Exodus, you see the Israelites leaving uh, Egypt to go towards the promised land. So we see that God had a plan of restoration and God wanted them to come in the wilderness to worship Him. And God had a plan. It was to lead Him into the promised land. It was never God's intention to see the Israelites die in the wilderness. You know, you might be going through a rough patch right now. You might be facing challenges. And you might be at a crossroad where you say, I don't know, what's the next move? But one of the things you need to know is that God did not brought you out of Egypt to let you die in the wilderness. Right? So God has a plan for us. And sometimes what happens is we forget that God has a plan. We forget that God is at work, that God is on our side, that God wants to lead us from glory to glory, from, from, from place to place, that He wants us to follow Him. So you see in the story the first step that God had for His people, it's to bring them out of Egypt. And I think that's what God wants to do in this world. He wants to bring people out of bondage, right? And we're grateful this morning that if you said yes to Jesus, he brought you out of Egypt. But He wants to lead you into the promised land. He wants to lead you in what He has in store. So it needs cooperation, right? It needs openness to what He wants to do. It needs a desire to say, God, use me. Can you say to your neighbor, God, use me. God, use me. I want to be used by God. But it doesn't stop in the wilderness. God brought them before the Jordan. And if you look at chapter 3, it's pretty amazing because they were facing the Jordan and, and God said, prepare yourself, pur purify yourself, get ready. Yeah, can, can, you, can we say that? Get ready. Get ready. Yeah. So in chapter 3, verse 4, the people said to, most, uh, to, to Joshua, we've never been there before. Like, we've never crossed the Jordan before. We've never been there before. And, and this is exciting to be in a place where we've never been before because this is where God intervenes. This is where God steps in. 
And when, you, when you're in a place where you've been before, you're comfortable, you rely on your own strength, right? You rely on your own experiences. So the people were before the Jordan, and, and they were a little afraid because they've never crossed the Jordan before. And, and God was there to reaffirm that I'm going to be with you, I'm going to walk with you, I'm going to show you the way. And wherever you are in this journey of life, you might be in a place where you've never been before, but God is with you. Don't go back. Don't look back. Don't go to the comfortable place. Don't go to what you're used to. Say, God, lead me to the news, the new that you have for me. Lead me in what you have in store. You look at our church family. In the last few years, we've, I don't know how many times I've said that, God. I've never been there before. I've never been there before. God, I, what's next? What do you want to do? And the first thing that comes, that comes to my mind is that I'm very limited. I can't do it. I just can't. I look at my own abilities, I look at my own strength, and I feel that I'm not capable to see the next step because I can't, but God can. It's the same thing with you. I believe that God, for, for us, God wants to lead us in a place where we've never been before so that we can rely on Him. But the reason why we're willing to go where we've never been before it's because of the why. It's because of the why. It's not for our glory and our, for our fame. It's not even for our comfort. It's to see the will of the Lord, to see the plans of the Lord, to see what He has in store come to, come to pass. Because like you often hear in GMC, we were made with purpose and significance. This is not it. We can't cap here and say, okay, we have reached the goal. We have, we have reached the mark. We've got to believe that God wants to bring us further. And as we place ourselves available, and as we say, God, use us as a body to see the work of the kingdom progress. As we say, God, here we are. Send us. Use us for your fame. I believe there's going to be a stirring up of the Spirit inside of us. I believe something fresh will happen, and God will do the impossible because the only time that God does the impossible is that when we step forward and we rely on Him, right? So we want to see that. We want to see that in our lives. We want to see that in the church. So what we want to say to God is, God, we've never been there before, but you're with us. You're with us and we can do this in you. In the chapter 4 that I've read, it says, the Lord did this, or He's the one that dried up the Red Sea and the Jordan. So, so when it comes to what God has in store, it's God that does it. It's not us. It's not our abilities. It's not what comes out of us, but what comes out of Him. And I, I like what God said to Joshua in chapter 1. Focus on me. Go to my word. Uh, be strong and be courageous. Can you say that to your neighbor? Be strong and courageous. I gave you the line. Stay focused on me. I've got a future for you. I want to work in your life. I want to bring you further. I want to bring you deeper. I want to bring you to where you've never been before. And you'll see my glory. You'll see my presence. You'll see my provision. You'll see that I'll care for you as you focus on doing my will. So here it says that God did it. And it was for all the 12 tribes. The 12 stones that they went and picked up from the river represent the 12 tribes. So that means everybody was involved. It was not 11 tribes. It was not 11 stones, I mean. It was not 10. It was not just a portion. It was for all. And I believe that God wants, us, wants all of us to step forward and cross the Jordan. He wants all, all of us to move forward and see His provision and enter in what He has in store. You still with me? So, But God can do it again. God can do it again. You know, you know why the 12 stones were there? To remind them of the faithfulness of God. That God was with Moses, that God is with Joshua, and that God will be from generation to generation. That we need to remember that what God has done in the past, we should remember what God has, has done in the past so that we can move forward and step in what God has in store. You know, in chapter 6, God had Jericho in mind. You know the story of Jericho? This huge city that was, had a thick wall. And they, they were able to see the walls of Jericho fall down because of they 
walked around Jericho, and the, the last day they walked seven times and they blew the trumpet and the wall came down. What a crazy story, right? But the thing is, listen to this. As you move from the wilderness and you cross the journey and you believe in God, God is setting you up for your future. God was setting up Jericho for the Israelites. So imagine if the Israelites would have said, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cross the Jordan. I'm going to stay on this side of the Jordan. They would have missed out on Jericho. It must have been such an event to see the walls come down, right? Supernaturally, sovereignly, to see the walls of Jericho fall down and to see the, the enemy, the, 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 the gateway to the promised land fall, it must have been amazing. I, I believe that their faith were pumped to see God give them, them favor. Well, it's the same thing when it comes to the journey. God wants us to step forward because he's preparing our tomorrow, right? He's preparing our tomorrow. And God has a plan, so we want to step into what God has in store. If you look at our nation, there's so many needs in Canada. There's 235 cities from 10,000 to 100. 235 cities that are similar to Winkler, to, similar to Winkler more than this region. And, and, and I believe that God wants us to have an impact in our nation. God wants to do a tremendous work in our nation. I, I had the chance to, to go to a conference last weekend in BC. It was a church planting conference, and it was called ARC. And ARC stands for Association of Relational Churches. An association of relational churches where churches are coming together and say, how can we win Canada? How can we see people in Canada come to the Lord? And we were, in a, we were about six to 700 people to the conference. You know what really floored me? Is that 80% of the people that were there were under 35. 80% of the crowd that were involved in church planting wanted to do a church plant, or were, or, or were volunteer in church planting, 80% were 35 and younger. I, I don't know, it just stirred up my heart. Sometimes when we look at our nation, we focus on the negative. We read the post on Facebook, on Instagram, about the government and all that. And sometimes we, we forget that God is raising up a generation. You know the story of Elijah when he felt alone? And he went before God and he said, God, I'm alone. I'm the only prophet. And God said, there's 7,000 men that did not bow their knees to Baal. I'm preparing a people. I'm raising up a people. And I believe that when it comes to our nation from coast to coast, I believe that God is raising up churches. I was able to talk with pastors of other churches that have the same thing at heart, to see the gospel go from coast to coast. And I believe that we're part of this, that God wants to raise us up as a church, as a community to reach our world. And I believe that it's, it's such a time as this. I believe there's a, a new work, a fresh work of Holy Spirit in our nation. I've never seen that. I've never been in a conference when I felt or I was the oldest. You know, I was looking around, I was in sessions, and I was the oldest guy. I felt what's, what would happen with time, right? What happened with time? But my prayer is to see GMC be an ambassador in Canada to reach our nation, to see people hear the gospel first here, first around here, but at the same time to respond to God's call. I, I believe that as we're moving forward, there's such an awakening that it, there's a stirring up, there's a movement that is not seen, but it's starting to be seen. Where, where people are saying, you know, we, we're tired of the status quo. We're tired of playing church. There's more to this than this. Here I am, Lord. Use us. Use my resources. Use my abilities. Use my life. Here I place myself on the altar. And use me for your glory. And I believe that this, that is a stirring up of the Holy Spirit in many churches today. So when it comes to moving forward, I believe that God has put a calling, a calling, a calling upon you and upon me to see the progression of God's kingdom. That the church is way more than about us, but it's about this world. 
It's about people that are in need of the gospel. So when it comes to GMC, I believe that God has a great future. You know, we want to make room. You know the story of Peter where he had Jesus in his home. And uh, they wanted to bring this guy in, this paralyzed guy, and there was no room in the home. And this is why we are going to four services. We want to make more room for people, right? And like I said a few weeks ago, we need your participation to see that happen. But the reason why we want to do that is because we want to make room. There's people that are in need of the gospel. There's some people that need to be refreshed. There's prodigals that needs to return home. There's people that are need to experience God and not just a, a religious, and not in a religious way, but in a life-giving way that rocks their world. And we want to see that. That's why we're here. We're here to see people be rocked by God. And we want to be rocked by God. We want to be moved by God. But we want to see our community or region or province or nation be rocked by God. So we want to make room. Imagine this. There's a guy that is in need of the gospel that is need is in need of forgiveness and healing, and there's no room in the church. You know what the other guys did? They make a they made a hole in Peter's roof, right? And they made room. I just, you know, if I share you my heart, I was saying, God, give me that heart. God, give me that heart to make room for other people. God, give me a desire to make room so people will hear the voice of Jesus. Receive a touch of Jesus. Receive forgiveness of Jesus. I don't want to be like the Pharisee that says, why are you doing a miracle on Sunday or on the Sabbath? Or, or, or what power do you have to, to forgive the sins? I want to make room. And we are called to make room, right? Because the calling of the church is to see people be reached with the gospel. And this is why we're here. You know, it says that one can... Sorry, I'm yelling. <laughs> can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten thousand to flight. I, I don't understand that math, right? One, a thousand, two, ten thousands. Imagine us, what we can do if we rally together, if we work together, if we see God's will together, and we see God have your way in GMC. That GMC is more than the place that I attend. It's more than a place that I go, but it's who we are. A people called by God, set apart by God, responds to God's call, and says, God, hey, I'm part of your plan. Use me, send me, work in my life. Manifest yourself in my life. I believe it's going to be unreal what the Lord will do through us. Imagine where we will be in 10 years if we take a hold of the truth. Imagine what would happen in Winkler, Morden, Altona, this region, Carmen. If we take a hold of this truth that we're called by God and that God has set his spirit upon us, that we get, as we make room for other people, as we make room in other cities for other people, as we make room in other, it may be even in other nations for other people, what God will do, God's going to fill it. And God will intervene. You, you know what? When we make room, we create a platform for God to do the impossible. We make room for God to do the impossible. And when God does the impossible, this is where faith arises. This is where people are touched because people are thirsty. When it comes to our nation, sometimes we think that the people are not hungry and thirsty. They are. They're not interested in religion. They're not interested in rules and regulations. But what they're thirsty of is spirituality. And I believe that we have the solution, and that's Jesus Christ on a personal level, in a life-giving way. So my challenge for you this morning is to say, God, may you use us for your glory. May you have your way in our lives. You know, we're called to leave a legacy. And, and when you go back to the story of the 12 stones, it was about legacy. It was about remembering what God has done. And this is why we're here. We want to remember what God is, has done, and we want to celebrate what God is doing. And I believe that when it comes to our future, we have to look back and say, God, you were faithful then, you will be faithful again. And one of the things that we don't want to lose when it comes to our heritage is our passion for Jesus, right? 
This is why we have the type of worship that we have. Because we want to be focused on God's presence. We want to be presence focused. We want to live a passion for God. We want to love God. We want to pursue God. We want to be hungry for God. We want to be desperate for God. We want to see God come and move. Come and work in our lives. Come and work in my family. Uh, we, what we want to see is, is to see in our hearts a greater hunger and a passion for God. Because I believe that's our strength. Right? As we passion for God. And secondly, the second heritage we want to leave is that we can't do it alone. We need unity. We can't fulfill God's calling alone. Like I said, the more we are, the more we can do. And I want to read a verse to you that comes that talks about that. It says, a new, commandment, a, a new command I give you, love one another as I loved you. So you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. So that's what we want to build. We want to build a family where we love one another. We want to be a family that pursues God. And like I said earlier, a family that pursues the lost. A family that wants to see others come to the Lord. A, a, a family that makes room for other people. A family that is the body of Christ, where Christ still fulfills His mission through the church. Where we reach the lost without any discrimination. That we understand that God's mission is not done. That God wants to reach our world through the church. You know, it's my honor to pastor this church. It's my honor to be here. I thank God for the elders that God has placed in the church. Godly couples that God has installed in the church. I thank God for the staff that God has given us. I thank God for the volunteers that made this. People were up here at 5 this morning to set this up. Thank you for believing in GMC. Thank you for all of you. Like I said, it's an honor for me to pastor you. And I'm so excited for what God is doing. At the same time, I'm so excited for God, what God has in store. And my prayer is that we would rise up together, that we would stand together as one man. I like the story of Nehemiah where they said, when it says, they were like one man. And when you think about one man, it, it, it talks about being one of unity, like other thoughts that you see also, it's like to be one hand, is that your different fingers you have different, you, are, you look differently, but you're all connected to the hand. And what we want to do is we want to be God's hands, and we want to be God's ambassadors for Him. Amen?